Yeah, another energy drink. That's what, five down? Three to go. We're watching five creepiest and most chilling videos caught in real life. God, I hope this is good. I really do. I really fucking do. It's by Dorset Ghost Mysteries. I'll leave the link to this video in the description below. Um, I'm home alone, so why not watch something fucking weird and creepy? Maybe you'll scare the shit out of me. You know, that's what I like to do when I'm home alone. Summon the devil and watch this. Wait. Nope, that's what I like to do. So, let's do this, bitches. Imagine what it would be like being watched by someone that is capable of murdering you or filming... Wait. Yep, nope, can't imagine it, sorry. In your very last moments. These are five creepy and chilling events caught on video. Let's begin. Number one. You ever notice in these videos, they, they 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 started off all monotone, like fucking Ben Stein for the Clear Eyes commercial. And then when they do the numbers, they're like, number one, one. Fucking Wishmaster. They get all creepy, and then they go back to like the normal monotone. What was this shit? What was this? Uh, they go back to the monotone shit. Number one. Over in England, there was this thing going on with this thing. It's fucking stupid. On 16th of April, 2014. Told you, back to the normal voice. 14. The 6,825 ton MV Sewell capsized while carrying 476 people. Most of them were school kids. The chilling footage that you're seeing was filmed by senior school kids that were inside the MV Sewell at the time it capsized. The terrified young teenagers were told to stay where they were inside their cabins by crew members. At first, the school kids were nervously laughing and joking, believing the likes of the captain, teachers and crew members would help them. What they didn't know was that when the ferry began to sink, the captain and his crew members evacuated the empty sword and- That motherfucker said, we out, we out, that's it. Fuck these kids. These ain't my kids. I'm out. Fuck them. Left the kids to basically die. He didn't even change his order for everyone to evacuate. These terrifying scenes were captured as the school kids were in tears talking about their loved ones. How terrifying it must have been when they were so young in a sinking ship with no adult supervisors or loved ones to help you. Oh. Isn't it great? Any other fucking time kids are like, no, respect me, respect me. Shit goes down, mommy. It's just fucking people, man. I mean, this is fucked up. I mean, these, these, the, the fucking crew and the cat, they was like, oh, we got kids below deck? Fuck them. <laughs> and they just rolled out. Is, we only have one lifeboat. There's 10 kids. Fuck them. Over 300 passengers died. The captain was later sentenced to 36 years in jail. You goddamn right. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> they should have put his ass in a fucking ship and sunk it. Is charged with murder. What happened to fucking, you know, the captain goes down with a ship? What happened to that shit? Murder. The owner of the MV Sewell, who was wanted by the police for questioning, was later found dead. Number two. This creepy video was taken by Steve. Oh, the nighty what? Hey, bitch, I wasn't done reading. Lauren Giddings. Wow. This creepy video was taken by Stephen McDaniel on the night he killed his classmate. Okay, that dude just looks like batshit crazy. Like, just, you can see it in his eyes. Like, I'm pretty sure he might have stuck his dick in her liver. Not like through her vagina, but like pulled her liver out and stuck his dick in it. Like, this, this dude looks fucking nuts. And next door neighbor, Lauren Giddens. He spied on her for a couple of months before he then broke into her apartment wearing a black mask and gloves. Lauren Giddens then fought with the masked man to get away. This is when she realized that she knew who the man was as she managed to pull off the mask and found out it was Stephen McDaniel. Stephen then strangled her to death. Ow. He then chillingly went back to his room and went on the computer. A few hours later he returned to the scene where he then cut Lauren up using a chainsaw. He then dumped her body in a trash dumpster outside the apartment complex they both lived in. The cops said so this dude kills this chick, leaves, comes back, cuts her up into pieces with a loud ass chainsaw, takes the body parts, puts it in the dumpster at the same hotel. Like, dude, why don't you just call the cops? We're like, hey, I'm gonna go over here and kill this bitch. 
and then just fucking take your car. At that point, you're just asking to be caught. And what the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, dude? I, I hope they are raping the shit out of you in jail. Two days later, found Lauren Giddens torso in a trash can. Stephen McDaniel later pleaded guilty to murdering Lauren. Number three. Number three. Imagine living in total fear of being watched. Well, for John Lang, this was his reality. Dude, first of all, I always feel like I'm being watched, okay? Going to sleep is a fucking nightmare. I'm laying there, I'm like, eyes closed. It always feels like something's just standing there staring at me. I wake up, fucking cat staring at me. I'm always being watched. Big Brother's always watching us. All of us. They know. See, this is the creepy moment where he caught men in a van filming his house with what looks like to be a thermosensitive camera. What I find quite disturbing about this is not only must it have been quite intimidating to see men filming your house, but the equipment they're using is quite sophisticated and expensive meaning he could be dealing with professionals. When they saw that John was also filming them, <sighs> they panicked what? and you could see them shutting the door. Why would anyone want to film John Lang though? Well, John was an activist against police corruption and some of his allegations were very serious. Oh, so it was shit. no surprise that he was disliked by the police force. So scared that his life was in danger, he posted on his Facebook warning the public that the cops are trying to kill him. I'm reading it real quick. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up. If anything happens to me in the next day or two, it'll be the result of the friends of the police department, my neighbor, and an employee at my job pay less brakes and tires on Blackstone. Jesus Christ. Ten days later, John's house was on fire. Inside, John was found dead. He was stabbed and then burned. Someone had murdered John Lang, but no one has been charged for the murder. Number four. Harrison O'Kane was one of the 12 crew members of a small tugboat when it capsized. For three days, O'Kane suffered in a small pocket of air inside the overturned tugboat. This is a chilling video that was captured by a rescue team. At first, you could see this ghostly hand coming towards you. To be honest, when I first saw the footage, I thought it looked like something that you'll see from a horror movie. You then could hear the utter shock as the divers then realised that one of the crew members was actually alive. At the time, the diver thought that the hand was of a corpse touching him. For three days, O'Kane, the only survivor, was living a nightmare where he could hear his other crew members being eaten by fish. He lived in complete darkness with no food, and all he drank was one can of Coke. In his native country, Nigeria... It's Coke. It's Coca-Cola's newest commercial. Oh, like, this is fucked up. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. Area. Some believe that it was such a miracle that he survived, that they asked him if he used black magic to survive. He still has nightmares where he sometimes wakes up. Wait, did, you're not going to tell me the answer? I need to know the answer. Did he use it? I mean, come on. Of course he used it. Who wouldn't? Telling his wife that the bed... Why is it during, like, every bad situation we, we resort to, like, Jesus, please, dear God, get me out of this? I swear to you. I swear. I swear. I, I, I'll never do cocaine again. I'll never do it. I'll never fucking... I'll, I, I'll never masturbate again. I'll never do it. I'll never do it. Like, we come up with the most ridiculous, asinine, bullshit shit that we know we're going to do again. But we use it as a bargaining chip. Like, why, why? Why? Why is that the only time we ever do that? It is sinking. One thing is for certain, he said. I'll never go back to the sea again. Okay. I've never been on a cruise ship. I don't want to get on a cruise ship. It's just, it's a floating hotel. It's a, it's a hotel that's floating in the water. I, there's no, there's so much shit in the fucking ocean. I'm, I'm going to stay on land, okay? I'm just, I'm going to stay on land. There's sharks, there's wildebeest, and I, I don't know, there's fucking shit out there in that water. If I can't see it, first of all, a shark, when it gets you, it gets you from underneath you. It comes straight up and it gets you and shit. I'm too fucking paranoid for that shit. I'm so, I'm too fucking anxious for that shit. I don't even like swimming in the ocean at Ocean City, just more shark attacks have been happening. It's just, if I can't see it, oh my god, I, I can't, I can't do that. I can't fucking do that. I'm never getting on, like, uh, jet skiing sounds fun, but at the same time, I'd be so scared to fall off that fucking thing into the fucking water. And I used to love the ocean when I was a kid. Nowadays, I've gotten older, and I'm just like, man, this could kill you. This could kill you. This could kill you. 
cigarettes could kill you, but at least I know how I'm going to die. But, you know, I don't want that unexpected fucking shit. A fucking alligator got my fucking ankle, you know? It's just, you ain't going to get me in a fucking cruise ship in the middle of the fucking water. Too much shit could go wrong. I, I'm just, no, 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 not me, man. I got shit to do tomorrow. Number five. On August 10th, 1984, pilot James Cadell was flying a Cessna when he crashed the plane into the forest. Both James and his friend, Ronald Wilmond, died in the crash. Three days later, backpackers found the plane wreck, but they also found a VHS tape of the crash. All you're looking at now is the footage, showing what happened during their last moments. Just before the crash, you can hear James shouting over to Ronald, Damn, hang on, Ronnie. The footage then chillingly cuts out. What video would you like to see us make next? Alright, so, um, what made the plane crash? Like, dude, if you're gonna do this shit, I wanna know why on some things. Did he practice black magic? Why did the plane crash? What was the reason the one fucking creepy white dude with the fucking hair fucking killed the one chick? Like, what? I wanna know why. I wanna know why. See, now, now I'm, I'm just, I, I'm compelled to just fucking Google this shit. I'm also too lazy to do it, so it's a constant struggle. God damn you. What'd you guys think? Was this creepy? Like, this, this, this is kind of fucked up. This shit was kind of, I'm, I'm, to be honest, this was kind of fucked up. I'm like, wow, what the fuck? Sound off below. Later, bitches.